What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of FTB Beyond. Oh yeah. Sorry, I was watching oh, the Blaze. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're what? I was watching the Blaze. The oh, you're blaze. watching the Blaze? Just kind of spacing yeah. out, be like, what mm -hmm. are we doing? Where am I? So we did some stuff. Yeah, we tried making this a little bit better than it was last time. Mm -hmm. we Just a little bit. our power storage, mm -hmm. which is pretty nice. So we've got... Vibrant capacitor banks. We've got like nine of them. 225 million powers. That's a lot of power. And it says that we're making plus 23,000 RF, which mm -hmm. is pretty pretty awesome, right? Yep. Yeah. And just wait till we get the rest of them in here. Like the rest of the generators. Yeah. We're making all the powers. Yeah. Once we get this whole wall filled in, it'll be crazy good. Mm-hmm. And we were going to like go with it. dynamos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dynamos in 2017? <laughs> Uh, we right. also did something down up and under here. Yeah, we've been doing a little bit of a little bit of work here, trying to make things a little bit bigger. I guess bigger is better. Bigger is better. Mm -hmm. And then we have an actual way, <laughs> a proper way into the original base, and so then down into to, our portals know, and stuff. Keep breaking the two blocks right here and going through, and <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. I like it. Right. So yeah, we moved our applied energistic stuff over here to this wall. And then I messed around with some of these cable facades and just kind it's, of polishing things up a little bit. It's all been ficated. Mm-hmm. So we got a little basement area here, XB. What's this all about? Well, um, we're gonna this is our dance hall and oots, 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 oots. No. Oh wait. Stop. Bad. Oh, Stop. not that. Oh, no. sorry, sorry, bad. my bad. That will never happen again. <laughs> uh, no, we're gonna do, I think, some e oh. auto crafting type stuffs. Maybe? Look at all of this stuff: pattern encoder, controllers, P to P's. You must be an expert at this stuff, XP. Not even in the slightest. <laughs> not even in the slightest. Okay. So aside honest. from the fact that I suggested that we should craft all these things, how much about a planet or just auto crafting do you know? Well, I, I did the, the, the full auto crafting, you know, with the P2P tunnels. You know, I, I did all of that stuff, like in Mod Sauce 2, I think it was. Oh, so that was like yeah. 30 years ago or something? <laughs> that was a while ago. Like, yeah. that was the last okay. time I did it, I think. So, so that was a while ago. Yeah. Uh, so things haven't really changed that much. It's, it's yeah, all but, pretty yeah. much the same. But I yeah, if you haven't done it for a while, <laughs> if you haven't done it, it's understandable. You probably forget. So, uh, yeah, so the first thing you got to know... I guess the molecular assemblers are the things that actually do the crafting. The yeah. uh, interfaces take the patterns. It pushes the items into the molecular assemblers. It does its thing, spits the items back out. So I mm -hmm. guess we need to lay those out somewhere. You got any particular place well, in I mind think, for that? I think we got to figure out where we're going to connect, right? Cause we got to connect to the system. Oh, you know what? We were talking about, we should move our, um, the controllers and stuff. And we did make some extra ones, didn't we? Yeah. So maybe what we should do is set up the controller down here and try and move the whole system so it starts down here. That might be yeah, a I mean, thing we can that do we can. That. Yeah, that's... I think that's probably something we should do. You got everything so out of the ME system. Those, set, set up those controllers and then we can disconnect this other one, right? Yeah. I don't we'll think the make... system likes having two controllers, two separate multi-blocks at the same well, time. Well, no, just but... like get that one ready to... Yep. I don't know where we're putting these things, so I'm just kind of like... Throw... Yeah, this is probably not a good spot. Let me... Uh... I'll put them up against this other wall. Probably like... Yeah, and we are going to make this look pretty. It's just for now, we're just making it look how it looks. <laughs> For now, we just want to get auto crafting the basics. Yep. <laughs> Bam. Power. All right. So now we just need to connect the mm -hmm. storage from here to here. And then I guess uh, reroute all the cables. So we need to connect. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Wait, wait. So we need to connect this to this, right? But we need to disconnect um... the other one first. Where are we? This is the... Oh, those are ME drives. Okay, I couldn't tell by the yeah. bottom side of those what those were. Yeah, so this needs to connect over to this guy somehow. I guess I'll just run some cable and we can figure out it's a better way of doing way. it later. 
Okay, so that's connected there, but this is now red, right? It doesn't like yeah. it. It's like, eh, wrong answer, because we have the other controller. So should we to just the break network. that other one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to break it, but we have other cables connected that we're going to have to replace. And... Hmm. So this one's red, too, because it's like, eh. All right, I so... think what we can do is just kind of connect these together, break this, break that. I think at this point, just go ahead and do it. Just kill it. Just break the controllers. So we just got to make sure all these cables are connected. We don't have more than eight on this line. Otherwise, we have to do the P2P thing. Uh, where does this one go? Um, That goes over toward the, the other, what we just set up over there. Okay. So we need these two connected. I guess we can just kind of do this action. Like, and it won't say if it's device missing channel. Device offline. Oh, device online. Device online. Yep. Nice. Uh, and then what was this one? Oh, that just goes up to our terminal up there. Okay, so we can just bring this straight down. Okay. Uh, well, oh, I mean, we should if everything. Check... We should check the the storage units because there's eight of those. Eight of the storage units. Yeah, the quantum storage units. Oh, yeah. This terminal up here is not working. Yeah, none of these have a device have a channel, so you're gonna have to do the P to P. Where did these come from? Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. The, these will be P2P. So we can turn this off. I'll just disconnect those for right now. So let's make sure the terminal upstairs works. Nope. Still no worky. Hmm. All right. So we just come straight down from there. So that's one, two, three. Four. You know what? I bet I, I bet I know what the problem is because this this line here, uh huh, it goes down to the um, words. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it goes down to like all the other things is what I'm saying. Like the storage drives, the like everything. Okay, so, these things over here, these are just getting power off the line. I don't think these use any channels. Yeah, but um, the storage drives over here? Oh, right, because it is touching those. Yes, we yeah. need to disconnect it from the storage drives. You are correct. So this has to be run a different... Oh. Yeah. So that has to be run a different way. Um... Okay, so we come down here. This comes down. Yeah, this thing. How did we? Okay, now I'm confused. Let's poke through here real quick. So if we run a cable up right here. Or somewhere that bypasses this, these storage drives and then goes upstairs, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, this needs to not be connected there anymore. That needs to be connected here and these guys here. So that should work. Yeah, we can see our items now. Yeah, and then we just need a line that goes, that's like almost dedicated for upstairs. Which we can run right. out the other side of the thing here. Okay. And then go up. Do, do, do you see where I, I'm at? I can see you on the roof. Boom, right here. Aha. Uh -huh. So this cable should no longer go all the way over here. We can go ahead and get rid of like all of this nonsense. Right. Yeah, this is like one of the hardest parts about applied energistics is like when you first set it up and then you gotta rearrange your stuff and things aren't working, you gotta rearrange it again. <sighs> like once you get it settled, like normally it's pretty easy you just run a line to wherever you need things working.
But this is good. This will free up a whole lot of Fluix cable for us. I think I'm going to start using a wrench. Right. Oh, you can't use a wrench cable. on this. Does this one work? No, you can't shift right click these things. Yeah, I don't remember ever using wrenches on these. Oh, you absolutely could in 1.7. I know I've done or it plenty of times. Maybe it's the crystal wrench. Maybe it's just picky. It might be. It might be. Okay, so this connects where now? Uh, this like line here. Down through here? Yeah, it connects over to all of that. So where does this line go right here then? That goes to the deep storage units. Okay, so this needs a P2P on it. Yeah. Um, I guess for right now we can disconnect it up here, because that's probably where we're going to put it. Well, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Maybe, maybe we'll leave it here. Okay, so all of this stuff just needs to run down to this trench. Yeah. There we go. And I'm going to get stuck. <sighs> there. Okay, so now everything should be connected. So now our upstairs should work. Question mark. Device online. All Works. of these look like they're online. Yeah, I think we're good now. I mean, we're always good. I mean, <laughs> we're pretty good. <laughs> we're pretty good. <laughs> so this is an old power wire that went to the controller. This doesn't need to be here anymore. All right. So all no. of this is now ready to go. What's all of this? What? Where? Who? All the upstairs stuff. That's all oh, ready okay. to go. Our controller multi-block looks pretty good down here. We have... Do you have a controller on you? Um... Yes. And you just I'll add it to it the... Here. Whichever side you want. Yep. Except for right there. Okay, that's fine. No, man. It was just like, holy crap, that was perfect. It, it was just in <laughs> shock for a second. That's all It's it like, was. did you really just place me there? Wow. <laughs> cool. Okay, so now we got lots of faces here for running P2Ps and stuff like that. Have you done P2Ps at all? Yeah, I, well, like I said, I did all that stuff, like, back in Oh, Montes right. Too. Yeah, it was all okay. way back in the day. Were you doing that with the sub-networks and stuff? Yeah. Okay, so the way I've started doing it recently, I when I first started doing AE2, I thought the sub-networks were the coolest thing, because you could run everything off one channel, but then, like, you start getting laggier and laggier off it, it seems like. Um, I find it easier just to run the P2Ps like directly into the controller. That way you have access to the receiving end anywhere on the network. So, okay. uh, the way I do it here, I'll grab some of these things so you can kind of check it out. I'm going to run this on the back of this as well. Oh no, I'll do it on the front actually, because there's not enough room back there. So you want dense cable, right? I know pretty crazy. That's insane. I can't believe you just I did know. That. I know. Stand back. <laughs> I'm doing work. Okay, so that is where that's going to connect to these P2Ps. So we, the way I do it, I like putting the P2P on these Fluix cables, the dense ones, so you can kind of see, like, how many channels this is using, right? Because you can only mm -hmm. limit up to 32. If you put that directly on the controller, you have no idea how many channels that thing's using. So that's why I like doing that. And then just connect it like that. And that's, it's like that simple. All you gotta do is just, you know, cable anchor, one of these cable anchor, one of those, and just keep adding the P2Ps on there. It's very, very simple. Uh, alternatively, you could use different color of these cables if you want to, and you don't want to use the cable anchors, but either way, it's pretty good. So that's it. All right. And now all we gotta do- the, Like this P2P can connect to a P2P somewhere else on the network, right? Anywhere else on the connected network. It doesn't have to be through its own separate line. Just anywhere on the network. Yep. Okay. So very, very nice. I like this way better. And so where do you think we should put these moleculars in the interfaces? Do, do, do molecular assemblers and the interfaces. Well, anywhere we can run Love the you. ME cable. Yeah, I mean, that, that would work just fine. 
you can do a straight line or you can do like little so one of these and then an interface behind it or an interface um, per side you know the way i've done them before like you can kind of stagger them i guess i don't know you could do like molecular assembler interface molecular assembler interface if you want to or uh molecular assembler on either side of an interface so it has the option of crafting two things at the same time i mean either way i think it's gonna be fine there's like a really efficient way to do these but we're kind of at the point where we need to auto craft all the stuff to do that kind of thing so however you would like to set them up as long as they're touching each other should be pretty pretty much okay yeah that that's another good way of doing it too. I'm pretty much pro. I mean, you are pretty pro. <laughs> so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine interfaces. We might want to remove this last one. <clears throat> what did I just get that for? For having eight channels on one network. This is this is considered a network, even though it's not connected to anything. Oh. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Right, so what we need to do is just run like a dense cable. No, I guess we could just use a regular cable connected to there, but as long as it's got all eight channels. Um, what's the best way of doing that? Maybe just a cable right to the bottom of this thing? I don't know if it has to touch an interface or if these uh, molecular assemblers pass the, the well, data. I mean, there's only one way to find out. There is one way to find out, that is true. I don't know if all you gotta do is just connect that one. You might be able to. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, so I don't. Together. Yeah, I don't want anything touching our P to P line though. So I kind of want to separate that. We'll use more cable anchors. Uh, that. They're all lit. They are all lit. So I guess the way to see if this works is you could grab the pattern or I guess the interface terminal and see if you see all eight of those listed there. Hmm. I don't know where to put it. I guess just anywhere. Yeah? <laughs> Probably up here. I think would all right, maybe I see be a good eight idea. Molecular assemblers. Nice. Oh dang it. I didn't realize it would do that. Yeah, you gotta wrench him, otherwise you break the cable too. Okay. So I will Okay, put it up so top. it's all good. So like when we wanted to hook up our um our deep storage units over here, or I guess these uh quantum storage. Mm-hmm. If you want to grab a P2P and the memory card you want to shift click on one of those things down there the p2p's off the interface copy okay. cool so yeah all then... you'd have to do is just slap a p2p on this cable coming down Oop. nope other side other way uh, it's gonna break gonna wrench. You gonna, you can wrench it i'm gonna see if you can That doesn't want to wrench. Let me make a quartz wrench. Let's figure out if that works or not. I mean, I can I can kind of see it being picky like that. <laughs> okay, so I got a Certus quartz wrench. It yeah. works. And it's gone. I okay. got it. <laughs> it looked like it shot off my screen. And so like that. Yeah, there you go. Yep. And then so we can use a dense cable here and then start connecting these other ones, or we can just connect it directly to that existing line right there. And then I just right click on that, right? Boom. Yeah, loaded settings or whatever. Place online. And then how do we connect that? Yeah, there we go. That that's literally all you gotta do. Uh you can get 32 channels off that. So if you use a dense cable, we could connect another set of these over here. But for right now, that's all we gotta do. So they're well, they're not coming online. Uh, it takes a second. Um, I'm sure it'll 
like it takes a little while for it to recognize the pdp and then it'll take a little bit of time after that to recognize everything that's attached to the pdp but yeah you are right this is not doing anything did i um it says device online unlinked I mean, you might have to shift click on it again the other one device missing channel yeah you mm. might have to shift right click on the one below again Copy device configuration. Mm hmm. Linked output side. Yep, yeah, I think that'll work now. Oh. All right, device online. There, oh, goes. there it goes. Okay, yep. now it's seeing stuff. So now we should be able to see all of our wither skeleton skulls over here. Well, at least 64 of them. Well, at least 64 of them because of the, <laughs> the way that works. But yes, we can see them over here. Cool. Okay, so we got stuff. We got P2Ps. We got these things. I guess we <clears> need <throat> to start making patterns and then get the pattern terminal hooked up. Ooh, pat oh, we wanted to check out this one, didn't we? The pattern encoder? Yeah, the pattern encoder. Oh, you know what? Another thing we forgot to do as well is get the code processing and the crafting storage. That's very important have those as well uh, I don't know where we're gonna put these all right so the pattern encoder is in the floor there hopefully that's okay should be I think that'll be fine yeah we gotta figure out how we're gonna get these things hooked up I guess we could put them over here or something for right now yeah I mean and nothing says we can't go out the other side either I mean there's more wall we can dig into so Right. I mean, we can just move those later. For right now, we can just set them up like this. Um, I guess for simplicity's sake, I'll just dig down and run that to the bottom. Okay, so those should be online, and that should be all we need for the auto crafting. And then we just need to make the patterns and uh, put those in the interfaces. Nice. All right, so let's see if we can get an auto craft to happen. Maybe we make a pattern to make patterns. Hmm. Oh, wait, we need patterns. We need a pattern to make a pattern to make patterns. Exactly. Well, you only need to make one pattern to make patterns. Well, yeah, but you still need to yeah. make a pattern to make patterns. Mm -hmm. To make a pattern. <laughs> That's, this is true. This is true. All right, blank pattern into here. And then oh, that's right. Pattern. It's down here. And it do things. Nice. You stick it anywhere in this uh, interface terminal without going down there, or you can go down there, and stick it in manually, whichever you want to do. Oh, I just <laughs> I just put it into the system. Oops. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Yeah, that was a pretty new move. I was just testing the, the audience to see if they were paying attention. There we go. All right, so let's see if we can make some patterns. Pat er, let's make ten next. Oh, we're missing quartz glass. Well, it looks like we have to make some of that manually, or set up another pattern for it. I crafted one, and it worked. It looks like nice. We have auto crafting. Uh huh. Pretty much the greatest pretty, thing ever made. XP's pretty good at this whole AE2 game. Check it yeah, out. He I mean, has auto crafting. I did work. You know. <laughs> cool. This is something we've been needing. Now we can just start making tons of patterns, getting all the things going, get some I think I, I'm kind of thinking maybe we should put like some some AE2 specific machines down here, like just for making stuff for auto crafting. Yeah, we could definitely do that. And then have like Absolutely. a set of machines up top for like if we just need something real quick, we could just toss it in there. But for right. the most so part, have like a a manual machine room and then a fully automated machine room kind of yeah. a thing. Yeah, have yep. the, the fully automated one down here, you know, like take out this wall some more or even back here. Right. And then just... I was almost kind of thinking like we were building the staircase and originally we had thought we'd do like, you know, the, uh, the pillar and kind of keep going down. So I started digging down this way. So uh, we might, you know, rearrange what we already have and make it better. Have more room. I don't know. Yeah. That'll be something we figure out later. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, all things in due time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
But for right now, I'm pretty happy. I mean, we can start basic auto crafting. Uh, we still got to automate things like processors and all this kind of stuff, but just going to make our life easier right now. And that's awesome. Well, and that's that as well as easier and faster with the AE2 stuff. So, right, right. Thank God for add ons right. for pain in the A mods. <laughs> the AE2 stuff mod is so good, especially the <sighs> uh, the crystal growth chamber, whatever that is. I love that. Yeah. That's so good. Mm -hmm. and doesn't wait don't they have like more spots for upgrades too yes yeah see. these things over yes. here have uh five, five instead slots. of the normal three yeah it's just better it's just better <laughs> it's so good <laughs> all right xp well you know i think we got a lot of good stuff done we still got a lot mm -hmm. more to do to make it better but i think we're out of time for today oh snap mm-hmm well, that's it for <laughs> that's it for us. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see, see you next ya. time.